We are ready to set up some project specific information for the building. We will enter some project specific information for the title blocks, such as client name, project issue date and status, and the project address, name and, num and number. If we're interested in doing something that requires a real geographical location, such as shadows for solar studies, renderings for energy analysis, we need to use the location button to configure the real world location of the project. There's one last setup that I like to do before the actual drawing process. That's adding levels. Levels represent any key vertical height that is important to the building. Levels could include floors, rooftops, uh, bottom of beams, uh, top of steels, and so on. Levels are datum elements that behaves as a horizontal plane running parallel to the ground. Many project settings are available in Revit project. Even though we begin the project with a template file, there are certainly some settings that we need to double check and possibly change with each project. Some of these include simple settings like the project location, the address, and sometimes temporary dimension settings. We're going to work as though we are in a project team environment and use the central file that was created in the previous lesson. I started that file with a commercial template since I will be drawing an education building. It comes with some basic views, a few schedules, and some sheets. The team can get useful information and feedback from their project instantaneously without the hassle of an enormous amount of setup. A template can solve all setup tasks. There will always be some setups that we must self-perform, but it can certainly shorten some of them. Now let's make a local copy of our center file. If you look at the screen, we do have a recent files for the education building. Do not click that. That will take us straight to the central file itself. It won't give us the option to make a local copy. What we do want to do is go to the open button, click open. And then we filter it for our central file. Now this is in my O2 folder that I created for Revit locals. This is my local file. I can tell because my name is dependent to the end of it. I do not want to open that either because if I open that, it might be an older version and I won't get any of the new updates. So let's scroll up. Let's go to my central folder that I created. This is the file I want, the education building. This is the central file. And you can tell because if I click on it, I get an option to either detach from center or create new local. Now I would detach, I can no longer synchronize. This means that I want to move away from this team environment to a, a single environment. I'm staying in team environment, so I'm making a local copy. Let's open. And ask me to append an existing stamp to my old copy. That way I have copies of whatever I've changed. Um, I'll, I like the option. I don't like to overwrite all the time, so I'll do the append stamp, excuse me, copy. Let's enter some project specific information for the tile box, such as client name, project issue date and status, and project address name and number. Now the project data can be entered directly into the title block. To do this, we want to go to the project browser, scroll down to our sheets, and let's go to the A1 first floor plan. Double click on that, and this will bring you to that floor plan. As you see, we have a top block that was pre populated because of our template. Let's scroll into the owner name and project name. Okay, so I'll just click in the owner, and that allows me to edit directly there. Now, for the owner, I'm just going to make one up. I think Chris Reyes can be the owner. And for project name, double click in that. And for the project name, let's just put education building. Project number, let's click into there and let's just make up a project number. And I think that's probably all I want to change for now. As you can see, entering product da project data is fairly easy. We just click into the text and fill as we see fit. So Revit likes to have more than one option to do the same task. As you know, that'll be a common theme. Another way to enter project data is to actually go to the, to the manage tab. And then we have this project information button here. We'll click on that. And we should get this dialog for project information. As you can see, when we scroll down, 
that the um, client name is already infilled in there because we entered the tile block. The uh, project name is also entered in there and the project number. So whatever we fill in the tile block will auto fill in this dialog as well. Now let's put in an address. Clean it, clean three dots. So I'm just gonna make him an address, 363. Roscans Avenue. Let's go to Los Angeles. California. So press OK. Keep in mind that all the information we input, even the address, are merely text. If we're interested in doing something that requires a real geographical location, such as shadows for solar studies, renderings, or energy analysis, we need to use the location button to configure the real world location of the project. Let's go to the Manage tab and the Location button. Now we'll get this location weather and site dialog pop up. Now we could pick the location a couple different ways. We could grab onto the home icon and drag it to pop location and then the geo coordinates will reference up here we can choose to go into default city list and then just scroll for los angeles here it goes l o Here we go, Los Angeles, and we have the longitude and latitude as well. We can also just type in the address, but I think Los Angeles is good enough for this case. Okay, it looks like we have just set the correct geographical world location for this part to be used in environmental studies. There's one last setup that I'd like to do before the actual drawing process, and that's adding levels. Levels represent any key vertical height that is important to the building. Levels can include floors, roof, top of steel, bottom of footing, top of footing, and so on. Levels are data elements that behaves as a horizontal plane running parallel to the ground. Since levels rely on vertical height, we can't manipulate it in the floor plan view. We need to be in a working elevation section or, or 3D view. Let's go into the project browser and click into the south elevation to open it. Here's our elevation budget browser. Let's do the south elevation. As you can see, our template has some pre-popular levels in there already. Makes it easier for us to just add or manipulate the levels here. Now let's take a look at the bottom footing. Notice it has, if you scroll in, notice it has a little elbow and that's to make it more legible. Right now, the levels are close together that will overlap with the top of footing annotation. So let's select on this level and see this grip here at the elbow. Let's click on it, click hold, and drag it back up. Now that's where it typically is. You notice it has the zigzag mark, and that's for creating the elbow. So let's go ahead and click on the zigzag to create the elbow. Notice that adding the elbows do not change the height of the level. It's simply used to provide space for annotation and make it more legible. Let's click on empty space to get out of the selection. I'll scroll a little bit. Notice that the heads are blue. And what this indicates is that it has a corresponding level view in the project browser. So we'll scroll up and look at floor plans. Each of these levels have a view in the floor plans already. Every level can have one or more floor plans, which explains why there are more floor plans than there are levels. It's possible to remove all the floor plans and have a level only datum without any corresponding floor plans. Let's delete the top of footing floor plan, floor plan in the project browser to test this notion. Top footing, I'll right click it and delete. Notice the floor plan is deleted from the project browser. But also notice that now the level turns to black, indicating that it does not have a corresponding view to it. Currently, there's only level one and a roof. We actually need a level two in there as well. So let's go ahead and put one in. To add a level, go to your architecture tab, 
and all the way to the right, we have a level tool. Click on that. Now notice we get this options bar and in the options bar, we have a check mark for making a plan view. That means when we add a level here, there will be a plan view added in the project browser that's associated with it. I'd like to get that checked. And now what type of plans do we want to make? If you click on that, it gives us three options. We want to make a ceiling plan, floor plan, and structural plan. Now we only need a ceiling and floor plan for this course. So let's click off the structural and press OK. Now notice we're in level two. Let's start from the left. So the level is really easy to do. One click starts it, second click stops it. And what I like to do is hover around this area until we get this extension here. And that means that we're aligned with, with the other levels. We'll click there, drag it to the right, and let's get the alignment again. There you go, it's aligned, there's nothing that can stop it. As you see, adding level is pretty easy. And it's also named it to the next one, which is level two. And as you can see, in the project browser, now we now have level two floor plan and a level two ceiling plan. I think we actually need a third level here as well. So let's add another level, but this time let's do it a little bit differently. Let's press escape twice to escape out of the level two. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna click on the level we just created level two and then go to our copy tool, which is the three circles here. Okay. Now we're in a copy mode. What we're gonna do now is the first click will grab it and the second click will place it. So we'll hover over the line, click it to grab it, move it up. It doesn't matter where you move it, just between the roof and level two and another click to place it. So we have two options to make the level. We use the level tool from the architecture tab and we also just simply copied an existing level. So it looks like we have all the levels we need. I like the naming for them. I like the level one, two, and three, but I do want to change this roof level into a different name. I kind of like top of parapet better since I'm planning on making a flat roof. So to change the name of level, it's pretty easy. We just click, double click into it, and then just type the name that we see fit. Now we get a dialogue, would you like to rename the corresponding views? If we put yes, it's gonna change this, this roof level name to top of parapet. Now keep an eye on that. You can see, we now we have top of parapet instead of roof. Let's click on empty space to get out of that selection for top parapet. Okay. Now we were using labels to edit the names of the level we can also do the same thing to change the height of the levels. Let's set the levels for these different heights. So level one makes sense that it's at zero. So for level two, I want this to be at 16 feet. You know what? This can get to be a little confusing. Um, maybe start from the bottom up because that could put the lower levels above the higher levels. So let's start from the top down. So with the parapet, I know I want the height of the building to be 48 feet. So we'll change that to 48, click enter. Now that level seems like it disappeared, it actually didn't. It just moved up really high. So there's right there, it's at 48 feet now. The next level, I wanna be at 30 feet. So let's zoom in here, let's click in there and type 30 and enter. Let's scroll back to zoom out and see there's my level three there. And for the second level, I want to be at 16 feet. So let's zoom in, click into the text and type 16 and enter. Those are the heights I want and that looks pretty good. The previous lessons focused on setups for the Revit interface and features we've learned how to customize the global options to meet our needs and move the palettes around to meet our workflow. We learned how to set a file for multiple users applications by enabling work sharing to create a central model so that the team members can simultaneously make design changes to a local copy of the central model. Then we wrapped up the project setup by 
adding the project locations and setting the levels for the building. In the next lesson, we will draw the first floor plan for the project. The building will be further developed in subsequent chapters.